It really doesn't seem long ago that SRAM launched Access, AXS, it's called Access, drivetrains for XX1 and X01 Eagle. But today they have launched it as GX Spec. So Trickle Down Tech is coming to GX owners, bringing that electronic shifting to a lower price point. So as you probably know by now, I'm Rachel from Offroad CC, and I've been given a GX asset access drivetrain to fit to my own bike, my Specialized Enduro. So I've fitted that, and it's ready for me to talk through the new kit with you now. First of all, tiny bit of history. When the first access group set was launched, it was built around the familiar and proven technology ETAP. So that's from the road side of things. The access kit features similar motor te technology and at the same time it has the similar removable batteries but with an all new trigger shifter so to operate the mech from mountain bike handlebars. I have a full drivetrain here on test but SRAM says that they want this kit to be seen as an upgrade kit for existing Eagle drivetrains. That means if you currently have an Eagle setup, and that's any Eagle setup, you could buy a mech and a shifter for £554 and upgrade. So let's get into the finer details and we'll start with that mech. Back in 2019, this was an all new rear mech. So 2019 was when an XX1 and X01 was brought out. And that mech was specifically designed to be driven by motors rather than actuated by cables. Those mechs, and this one here, has the same one-way clutch mechanism as a normal mech and with that cage lock too, but it's now joined by the overload clutch, which protects the internal gearbox if you fall off or if it's about to get damaged, so in the event of a crash. In the event of that impact, the motor gearbox disengages, so giving the derailleur freedom to move and instantly returns back to its starting position. This means that it protects itself and doesn't get damaged in a crash, but it's also a seamless experience for the rider and you won't notice a thing. The new mechs, so there's just one mech, one GX Access mech, it's compatible with 10 to 50 tooth cassettes and also those newer 10 to 52 tooth ones. There's a thing called trim, which is used um, for aligning the mech, and that's set at installation. It means there's about 30 little micro positions that the mech can be set at within each gear click. And it's also completely waterproof, so it should stand up to a lifetime of UK muck. So, like me, you were probably thinking, well, what's the difference between a GX mech and then those high-end ones? Well, in this mech, it is just the bearings in the pulley and the cage material. So those differences make the mech heavier at 465 grams, and that does include the battery. For comparison's sake, a mechanical GX mech is 300 grams, so making that GX access mech a little bit heavier and hanging off the back of the bike, where you perhaps don't want loads and loads of weight. It's something to bear in mind for those looking to drop weight. So that 465 grams is also a fair bit more than the 350 gram XX1 access mech, but it is a fair chunk cheaper. So that XX1 access mech will cost you 660 pounds, whereas this one is 342. Up at the shifter end of things, this shifter developed for SRAM access is pretty much the same across the board in terms of their ele electronic mountain bike drivetrains. The big and obvious difference between this and a mechanical one is the lack of cable running out from underneath the shifter and into your frame. It's super neat and really does clear up the cockpit. This is called the A Eagle Axis Trigger Shifter and it's basically a rocker paddle. So you slide your thumb up and down on this paddle to change into a different gear. What each button does can be totally configured through the new Axis app. Plus there you can set up double shifting or single shifting if you like. There's a neat trick up the shifter sleeve as well. SRAM has added a secret sprint paddle on the front side of the controller. And that secret sprint paddle allows you to operate via your index knuckle. So if you're out of the saddle or sprinting when you're racing, then that's the one you'd use. Weight wise, this little shifter is 80 grams. It's compatible with Matchmaker X gear. And also it pairs with any other access mech too. And like the mech, completely dust and waterproof. To power the whole thing, batteries, which are sold separately from the mech, adds just 25 grams. 
and is removable so I've got two and a charger. These little batteries don't take long to charge at all and they provide a claim 20 hours of riding. Of course, there are lots of variables that dictate the actual amount of runtime that you get, so how much you're shifting, etc, etc. Also sold separately is a battery cover, which you'll need to remove and replace when you replace this battery on the Meg for charging. I've had my first battery fitted um, for a little while now. I've only put in about 15 hours of riding though, so it's safe to say I'm still on the same battery. So, that upgrade kit. So the kit is £554 and in there you get a mech, a shifter, a battery, the battery cover, chain gap tool which you use when you're setting up the mech. If you buy them all separately the mech is 342 quid, the shifter is 139 quid and the battery is at about £40 each. Think that sounds expensive? Well yes, I suppose it is pricey compared to simply buying yourself a new mechanical GX mech which would be at £110 at full retail and a new shifter at £36 plus probably what a tenner max for new inner and outer should you need to replace them. So in return for your 550 quid, you are going to get a drivetrain that is quick to install, it's reliable and it's tunable. It clears up and gets rid of a cable at the front of your bike, making it a loads cleaner to look at. Of course, you also have to factor in a little charging faff, but I'm pretty sure, like charging your phone, it will soon become second nature. In a real world sense, the access kit was really easy to fit, and not having that cable to fit really simplifies the process. When riding, if you are used to using a regular shifter, then the new action of this access one will take a little bit of getting used to. So I was advised to use a thumb and a kind of rolling action to operate up and down whilst leaving your thumb in the same place. But realistically, my thumb is actually a little bit small for that. And I do still find myself moving from top to bottom of the shifter paddle. The mech at the rear does look like a bit of a behemoth, but as soon as you get used to the look of it, it does look normal. The extra weight isn't immediately discernible either, especially not on this bike, which isn't exactly built to be light. The upper portion of the mech with the battery and the motor is the heavier part and that of course is secured to the mech hanger. So in terms of weight, thought should be given to whether you want all that weight attached to the rear of the bike. It's extra unsprung weight which will affect the suspension performance. So basically it's physically more weight to move out of the way when you hit bumps. But on the flip side of this, with any cassette and any rear mech, we aren't exactly in the territory of making things light out the back or reducing that unsprung weight by something, say the use of a gearbox. So how much this matters is really down to you. Shifting is, as you'd imagine, smooth. I'd say it feels like shifting one gear is slightly quicker than a mechanical setup. If I'm gonna put a number on it, it feels like it's less than a second from pressing the button on the paddle to hearing that chain move. And as for setting the gear up and trimming, I've not had to touch a thing since setting this bike up. Strand reckon there are millions of Eagle drive chains being ridden around the world. And I reckon, if you really think about it, this seems totally feasible. It makes sense that a lot of those riders will want to make this upgrade and upgrade their Eagle kit to electronic shifting. The only real barrier I reckon is probably gonna be whether people can afford it or not. SRAM also say that this is going to appear on loads of e-mountain bikes over the following months and years. So just like we see Shimano DO2 on top flight e-bikes, now there'll be a SRAM option too. We'll be publishing a full review of this as soon as I can get some more miles in on it. So make sure you check back on www.off.road.cc for that review. In the meantime, we'll be having more videos appearing on our YouTube channel, so make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you get notification when we release a new video. That's all from me for now, so thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you again soon.